Anyone that knows me knows I have an entire series on world edit tutorials, and in that series, I have at least two videos covering different selections. I have the basic selections and the advanced world edit selections. I've also shown off the world edit CUI mod in order to see your selections, which makes everything a lot simpler. Another trick I've been using is using the command macros mod in order to bind the position commands to different hotkeys, which has helped a great deal. Now easy edits comes along and takes all of those things, improves upon them, adds to them, and makes the entire selection process so much easier. Let me show you. This is a frog. And around this frog, we have a cuboid selection. And as you know, I am using the World Edit CUI mod in order to see my selection. Now, I've covered this in previous videos, but just in case anyone is watching this and you don't even know basics of World Edit, in regular World Edit, you have the option to manipulate your selection using Three basic commands. There is the expand command that allows you to extend your selection in a specific direction. There's the contract command, which lets you shrink the selection in a specific direction. And there is the shift command, which will let the entire selection shift in a specific direction. And I cover all of that in another video. I'm not going to get into all of those. But now, with easy edits, we have a few other options for manipulating our selection easily. The first one is the next command, and similarly to the shift command, it's going to move the entire selection the same distance as the selection itself. So it's kind of like the shift command, but it's just moving things a lot more quickly. Just like with other commands, it does move the direction that you are facing, but you can specify a specific direction if you so choose. If you want to move it with an additional space, you can also add a gap, meaning that is the number of blocks it's adding to the shifting. So it's your selection length plus that number of blocks is how much it's going to shift by. Another command is the cell here command, and this will move the selection to the player's position. Now, if I were to just enter it by itself, it's going to take the first point and put that where I'm standing. However, you can also define which point or which part of the selection is being moved to you. So if I were to go over here, for example, and I did cell here, and I can tell it to move position one, two, or the center of the selection to where I'm standing. So if I said position two, it's going to put this corner where I'm standing. If I said center, it's going to put the center of the selection where I'm standing. But all this is doing, again, is just moving the selection that you've already created. So it's not actually adding more blocks to it, it's just repositioning it. This next command is honestly one that should have been in World Edit from the beginning, and I'm surprised it's taken this long for someone to finally add this command. Whenever you're doing a convex selection or anything that involves a lot of additional points to it, and let's say you mess up somewhere along the way, well, Normally, in the past, you'd have to restart your entire selection because you have no way of undoing any of these points until now. Now, with easy edits, we have the delete position 2 command, which will delete the last point that you have created in your convex or poly selection. And this is so amazing. It has saved me so much time and been such a huge help. And if you ever happen to have a mod, like the command macros mod, like I use, I even bind this to a key bind so I can just do this automatically with some keys, which is also super helpful. If you stick around a little bit longer, I'm going to show you some even more ways Easy Edits has to manipulate selections that are even easier, but I have some other commands I need to show you first. If you have a selection, such as this convex one, and you wish to invert the order of the points and put the first point on the opposite end, then you're just going to do cell invert and it will swap the order of those points for you. This will work with any selection type, but it's probably most useful for the convex selection. Easy Edits has also added a way for you to save and load various selections. Here I have the Easy Edits words in a cuboid selection. And let's say I wanted to select this exact same position for a future time. I'm going to type easy selection or easy cell for short. And then I'm just going to do save and then enter whatever name you want the selection to be called. So I'm just going to call it easy edits. And now it's going to have that selection saved as a cuboid type. 
I'm going to deselect that for now, just so you can see how it works when you load it back in. So if I wanted to load back in that same selection, it's going to be easy sell, load, and then whatever name of your thing that you want to load. You'll notice that all of these are preceded by a dollar sign. That's just a little indicator for the saved selections, but it does autocomplete, so you don't really need to remember it. And here you can see it has loaded in that selection for us again. I would say saving and loading selections is most useful when you have an extremely large area that you need to select, such as this latest build of mine, where I did actually save a selection and reloaded it whenever I had to come back into the world to work on it again, or whenever I'm ready to delete this, I will simply just need to easy sell, load, and it is the eagle area. And this is a poly selection that it is saved, and it doesn't reach the full height of it, but it can easily expand it or do whatever I need to. Saving selections is especially nice whenever you have a very complex poly selection like I have here. So far, that has been my main use for it. If you want to see all the selections you have saved, it's just easy sell then list, and it will list all of the selections in a row. If you want to see your selections based on the type of selection that they are, then you're going to do easy sell list minus G to show the different groupings of them. So here I have one cuboid and three polygon selections. And just like with any other thing that you can save, if you wanted to delete one, it's just easy sell, delete, and then enter the name of the one you wish to delete. Easy Edit seems to have a habit of making multiple commands for everything, so there is a separate command called cell load that does the exact same thing as the easy cell load, it's just a little bit shorter. There's always a million ways to do the same things. I have been loving these extra selection commands so far because I have actually been putting them to good use in some of my most recent builds. And you know what? That's not even all the Easy Edits has to offer. There's so much more. Introducing the Super Wand Tool. The Super Wand Tool offers four distinct modes for point selection and manipulation, providing an expanded way to work with region selections. In other words, it just makes everything better. And yes, you will need to be able to see your selections. That is important. How does one get the Super Wand Tool? Well, I'm glad you asked. All you need is any kind of tool or weapon in your hotbar, just like binding a brush. While holding that, just type Super Wand and it should auto-complete. Let's go ahead and enter that and see what this has to offer. Now, in order to showcase this off the most effectively, let me show you exactly what buttons I'm pressing for everything. Probably the best way I can describe Super Wand is it negates the need for the Command Macros mod, which is something that I've been using, in order to select points by using hotkeys. This is kind of the same concept, but built inside of the plugin. Right away when you equip Super Wand, it will tell you over here what the current mode is. There's several different modes, and for most of them, the way they work is you will right-click to place a new point and left click to remove a point with the exception of one of the modes. But let's go over this first mode here. It will tell you what it does down here, but I'm also going to demonstrate it. So this current mode is trace mode. Depending on whatever selection type you have, it will basically let you select your positions based on what you are looking at. So again, it's right click to place all points. So I'm going to right click to place the first position, right click again to place the second position, now with the cuboid, it's a bit different because each time you right click after that, it's only moving that second position. There are a couple ways of changing that first position now. One way is to left click twice to remove both points and then restart. Another way is if you use the F key or the swap tool, it's going to invert those points and this will also work for all of the other modes. I'm just showing it to you right now with the trace mode. So that is another way if you wanted to invert those points, then you can quickly adjust both positions that way. And just want to show you how this works with a poly selection because it works the same way. I'm also going to just clear it by using the normal deselect command. But if I wanted to create a very complex poly selection, I could just trace around my subject like this, which is so nice and easy. And if you wanted it to go taller, you have to click on something that's taller, but now my selection is a bit messed up, so I could left click to remove that last point, or yeah, now it's back down here. Or you could expand it up however you wanna do it, but if you click up or down, it will adjust your whole selection there. That time somehow it stayed. <laughs> I don't know how I got to do that, but yeah. 
That is the trace mode, which just selects points based on what you're looking at. To switch between the different modes, it's sneak and left click. Sometimes I do push spacebar at the same time, just so I'm not falling down. But it is just shift and left click that you need to do, those two things. And the next mode is the position, which selects based on the player's location. So if I right click here, it's going to select my per first position there. I still have the poly selection. So now I can go around and then just select points by right clicking wherever my character is going. So this is the one that works most similarly to what I already do with the Command Macros mod. I think each approach has its own benefits, but it is nice that this one is built into the plugin. The next mode is the relative mode, and to showcase this one, I'm going to use a convex selection because I think it works better with that selection type, but it will select the targeted point on a plane relative to the previous point. It is a bit confusing at first getting used to this one. I'm going to start off by creating a convex selection. Oops, I'm going to start all over because it looks like I clicked over there. The first position you set has to be one that you can actually target and see. So I'm just going to select the ground there and now I'm going to select another one there, another one there, another one there. Now you might be wondering, okay, so how am I selecting midair now, but I couldn't at first? It's because after that first point is set, each additional point that you're adding is the same distance away from you as the previous point was, or from wherever you currently are. It's all relative to your player's position. In this example, see the distance I am away from that first point before I place the second point, and you can see the distance is the same. So no matter where I move to, whatever distance there is between me and the last point I placed, that is the same distance for the new one. Likewise, when I get closer to the previous point and place a new one, it is also going to be placing close by. That's the relative mode. It really is just kind of tracing in the middle of the air once you get the hang of how it works. There is another mode that I think makes everything even simpler. So let's get into that one. This is my favorite one and that is the grab mode. Now this lets you grab a specific point or a whole selection and just manipulate that one point or the entire selection. I love this. It works a little bit differently because you're not actually placing or removing any points. You're just manipulating the ones that already exist. This is where seeing your selections is very, very needed because you have to see where all of these points are to be able to grab them. So I'm going to select this point by right clicking on it and you'll see it says I grabbed point number two. Now in order to move it, it's going to move relative to where my person is. So if I move my person back and I right click again to place it in the new position, it's placing it based on the distance from my character. Now in order to change the distance, because right now if I go around, it's going to keep that same distance as I continue to move it. But if I want to re-pick it up at a new distance, if that makes sense, I have to first release it by left clicking. Left click is release, right click is grab. But every time I grab it, whatever distance I am away from it, that is the distance that it's going to place away from me. So that's just something to keep in mind. Then I will left click again to release it. This one does take a little bit of getting used to, especially since it works a little differently. You have to right click twice in order to move things. I accidentally grabbed my selection, but that's another thing you can do. If you click anywhere that's not on a specific point, you can move the entire selection. It moves the same way relative to where you picked it up. And you just have to left click to deselect it. So I'm going to move this point now over, deselect, pick up this one, move it, deselect, pick up this one, move it, wherever I want it, deselect. I just love this tool so much. I have been playing around with it and it's actually been really useful for getting very specific curves. Anyway, it's really fun to play around with and I highly encourage you do so. But this one, that's pretty much all you do. It's just grabbing the points and manipulating them. And I think you can use it for any selection type, but I find it to be most useful with the convex or maybe even polyhedral selections. Now there are a few extra controls that you can do with Super Wand. I already mentioned the first one in the trace mode and that's if you press F to invert the selection. So it will invert where the first point starts. And again, these work with all of the different modes in the Super Wand. So there's F to invert. And then there's also, if you press sneak 
and F, or I'm going to also press space, but it's just shift and F, then it will just move the first point up the path of your selection. So it's just shifting that first position by one point each time. And once it gets to the end, it jumps right back to the beginning. Just for fun, let's do a spike command. Let's use snow blocks. This is using Archeon, by the way. Let's start with a radius of six and a radius of one. I have tutorial on this also, but you can always watch that video if you wanna learn more about it. All right, so there's a basic spike. And I don't know why it decided to go that direction there, but if I wanted to adjust the position of that first point, which currently it's right down there, if I do shift F and I'm just gonna move it, I don't know, about halfway down. So now my first position is, oh wait, I think I need to move it some more. Let's get it into this point right here. All right, so there it is. That one's green now, so it's the first position. You'll see now my spike starts from this point and moves in this direction. So it's cool for the spike command especially because you can mix it up along the same path. Here I have a much longer curve and spike. And if I move my points up a little bit down this path, I don't know where it is currently. But let's just try doing this again with a very large radius to begin with. Okay, so that time it started there and it moved along there. I will say the one thing that is you do need to remember, and I think this is why my other one wasn't working right, it's because wherever the original first and last point were, so that was point number one, that was the last point of the previous selection, that's why it's creating this straight path. So that is something you just have to make a note of whenever you're using the convex selection with this, is it's going to connect those points by itself. And when it does that, it just adds a straight line. Still, it works with all selection types, not just this one. And yeah, that's just some of the extra controls that you have when using SuperWand. And that concludes this easy edit tutorial. I hope you were able to learn a thing or two or three or four or five or six, however many things you learned. I've already started to use some of these commands throughout my process. It's changed my life, let me tell you, and I hope it can change yours too. I do have other easy edits tutorials on my channel and hopefully more on the way, as well as tutorials for other plugins and mods for Minecraft building. Thank you for watching and have fun building.